Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Blosser, I am a fifth year mechanical engineering student at the University of Cincinnati, and I've been working at Siemens Digital Industries for four years now. The goal of this video is to serve as an introduction for a series of videos where I'd like to expose students, and specifically students on SAE car racing teams, to the end-to-end -end solution Siemens has to offer in the world of CAD and CAE. And what do I mean when I say end-to-end? -end? Well, I mean the birthplace of an idea and in initial CAD concepts all the way up to the simulation process, whether it be computational fluid dynamics, CFD, uh, static structural analysis, maybe it's a dynamic analysis or a thermal analysis, whatever it may be. Uh, and then taking those results and applying it to an optimization loop where you go back to your initial CAD concept, update it, and then make the results better. So. I truly believe in the Siemens solution being incredibly powerful, and one thing that makes it very powerful is the fact that all of that takes place within one concentrated environment. You never have to leave and go use separate tools, you can do everything in an end-to-end -end solution. So to explain further, I'll flip my screen around. What you should see is the NX homepage. And this is where you start off when you open NX, uh, no matter what version you're in, although I am in NX version 1980. If you're unsure of what you're in, uh, you can go ahead and go to File, Help, About NX, and it'll show you right here. So if you're confused why something I'm doing in these videos isn't working, um, make sure you're in the correct version first. Uh, so from the home page, I will go ahead and open up a part, and I'll choose the SIM file, which uh, will be a sneak preview of what we'll be learning how to do in the next couple of videos. This is just a simple torsion test. And this geometry that I'm working with for these videos comes generously from UCLA's student FSAE team, who has been partnering with Siemens to provide the information necessary for creating these videos. Uh, it's their cooperation which allows these videos to be as helpful as it possibly can be for similar teams and hopefully help you out in the same way. So. The first thing I want to talk about is the file structure. You'll see here at the top that we are in a sim, that means simulation, and the sim is where all of the boundary conditions are stored. So this is where you'll assign your loads, as you can see at the top, as well as your constraints, uh, and where you'll solve your solution from. Uh, if you open this little plus, you'll be able to see that below it is a fem and a fem.i part. Uh, and I'll talk about the i part in a second, but we'll go ahead and enter the fem, which stands for finite element model. And we'll see a bunch of commands at the top here for meshing. And that's because the fem is where all of the meshing is stored, uh, whether it be 1D, 2D, 3D. Um, it's essentially where you are creating elements uh, for your solution to run. So the fem obviously is one step down from the sim, and a further step down from that would be a I part. There doesn't necessarily have to be an I part, um, but an I part is essentially a new version, a copy, if you will, of the original part you started with, which allows you to change it um, without actually changing the initial geometry you're starting with. So with when you're within the part, you'll actually see um, all the geometry that you have. Uh, and you'll see these geometry commands like modeling, uh, geometry preparation, and like I said, this is the I part, so this comes back to the chassis structure, which is the part part, uh, and again, this is the geometry coming from UCLA's team. So that is how the st file structure works. You have the sim on top, followed by the fem, if you create an I part, and I'll show you how to create or not create an I part later, it'll be in between the fem and the part, and then you have the part at the very bottom, which everything is referencing. So essentially, in the next couple of videos, I'll take you from this simple line geometry that we should be able to see if I yeah, turn this off. So I'll essentially show you how to start from here to creating this physical geometry, and then how to create a mesh for it. This is an I part. <laughs> how to create a mesh for it, and then how to set up your boundary conditions and create a solution. And then in a additional video, I will show how to work with the suspension model to do a similar format of analysis. 
These videos are not intended to show the most advanced computational methods. These videos intend to show the end-to-end -end solution, like I said, from birth to the end of the process once, and once you understand that process, it doesn't change. So you'll see there's a million commands here, uh, and, a, and in the sim, there's there's a lot of room to increase fidelity and accuracy for your model, but once you understand the base process for how a simulation works, uh, you'll be able to apply that to your model. So that's all I wanted to say about the file structure and capabilities of NX, at least for the introductory video. Um, and the only thing left I wanted to say was that it is an incredibly powerful set of tools and it's very, very desirable uh, in the working field. And from my experience, um, companies using Siemens tools also seem to pay better for those CA positions than competitors. Um, I mean, even within the auto industry, um, these tools that hopefully I'll teach you a little bit how to use in the rest of the videos could be directly applied to um, Bugatti, Penske, Red Bull Racing, Yamaha, geez, Mitsubishi, Roush Fenway. We have a lot of big industry leaders that use our software um, and very much value students with the skill set. So this is a worthy investment and I very much hope that these videos not only add value to you, um, but prove to be incredibly helpful for the team that you are uh, racing with. Hopefully they're helpful. Thank you.